Hello, I'm Sarah Carnikin, and this is me in 1976. A picture of innocence. And in fact, that look of innocence was one of my greatest assets as a con artist. Or dry hustler. This all happened to me uh, more than 30 years ago. I was on magazine assignment for Cosmo to investigate the dance halls in the Times Square area. Now, you may remember in movies that back in the day, lonely sailors and soldiers used to go to these dance halls to pay 10 cents for a dance with a, a hostess, and then they go to a table and pour out their hearts to them, maybe start a romance, have a few drinks together. So the question was, this was like the swinging sex craze 70s, why were these places still around, you know, these sort of more innocent romantic places? So the idea was for me to go undercover into one of the dance halls, hire myself in there, and find out what was really going on and report back. Now this is how I dress for work, but please, let's not look too long at this. Well, it turned out that dancing was the least of my duties. Uh, it became clear pretty quickly that what I was supposed to do was, yeah, dance with him a little bit, but mainly get him to the table, uh, get him to buy an expensive drink, and then um, perform my magic on him under the table and bring him to the point of satisfaction. So, of course, I wanted to get the hell out of there. I was really upset. And uh, one of the hostesses kind of took pity on me, and she took me aside and she explained, you know, all the other women in this place do that, but I never touch the guy, and I make more money than any other woman here. Uh, she said, I'm a dry hustler. So when I heard those two words, I suddenly saw this secret underworld open up before me, and I knew that I didn't have a magazine article, I had a book. So uh, what happened was I got a book deal um, based on a first chapter and an outline, and I took that money, and the two of us, uh, Crystal and I, traveled across uh, America going um, from hotel to hotel, uh, dry hustling as we went, and she was teaching me the ropes. Now, what is a dry hustle, you may ask? Well, a dry hustle is when a guy approaches you, and you always let him approach you. You never go up to him. Uh, and he, you let on pretty, pretty fast that you might be interested in having sex later. Uh, so he relaxes you know, because he thinks he's going to get what he wants, and he's going to get it for free because you are not a whore. You are a lady. You just happen to be attracted to him. Um, meanwhile, you're, uh, you're unreeling this story that gets him very involved um, and very sympathetic towards you because you need money for this and you need money for that, and oh, you can't meet him, you know, unless you can pay off the babysitter, you know, or your landlord or whatever. Uh, so he's laying out cash without really adding it up, you know, because it's in drips and drabs. And then when he shows up for the, uh, the assignation, thinking he's going to get laid, you are nowhere to be found. You have disappeared with his money. Now, the secret to being a really good dry hustler, an experienced one, is that you learn to be able to suss out who a guy is right during his first lines of approach to you. That's where, he, that's where he really reveals himself. You learn, you know, what kind of a guy is he like? What fantasies does he have about you? What kind of sexual fantasies does he have? Uh, and then you make up a story that suits that fantasy, and like an actress, you play the part of that woman that he hopes that you are. Uh, you tell him a story that's all based upon that, uh, and you hook him on the story. Um, now, not all men are that gullible, but you learn simply to turn your back on them and look for the easy marks. The other thing is that it's best to work with what you've got. In my case, it was my very innocent, girly look. Uh, a lot of men wanted to daddy me. Sometimes I sussed out that a guy, you know, w would be very excited if I was a virgin, you know, and that was a credible thing for me to say. Because uh, sometimes I was even dressed, you know, very conservatively or like a little girl. Crystal w worked with what she had. She had an enormous pair of boobs, and that's all, she, all that she needed was to, you know, to have a, a very low-cut dress on. Now, I hasten to add 
that this is a very lonely life. Uh, it's also illegal. The police call it bunko, actually, not con, art con artists. So as bunko artists, it's possible you could get arrested. But you know, chances are that your marks are never going to report it anyway. Um, but for Crystal, it was addictive. Uh, and it was also in her blood. She turned out to be from a long line of gypsies. So conning innocent people was kind of in her DNA. It was, certainly was not in mine. So I was very glad when, when it ended and I could co go home and write the book. And one of the great pleasures of writing the book was putting down the, the character of Crystal on the page because she was like one of the most inventive liars that I have ever met. Just plain larger than life. Uh, now, this book was published in 1977, it's true, but it's still a really fun read. Uh, so it's very exciting for me that it's being reissued as an ebook. You can buy it on Amazon, you can buy it on Smashwords, the Apple Bookstore, you can download it even as a file at Smashwords. Uh, for you to read off of your computer. I hope at least you'll try a sample chapter, but I do have to warn you that the sex talk in it is very, very, very raunchy and frank. And if you do download it and you do read it and you do like it, please drop me a line at my website, sarahkernikan.com. Thank you.